Everyone knows if you get people to train, not everyone sees the same gains. For example, this paper recruited 585 individuals and had them train their biceps for 12 weeks. A fair number of individuals saw biceps gains close to 20%, but some saw as much as a their 50% increase, and some actually experienced a 5% loss in size. Why? After all, all subjects trained identically, exposing the muscle to mechanical tension, which we know to likely be the primary hypertrophy stimulus, as detailed in another video. Genetics is often the default answer. For sure, there is evidence variation in genetic factors impact hypertrophy. Yet, various physiological factors likely help explain why some grow more than others. Capillary density is one example. The idea capillaries may be important for hypertrophy suggests under certain cases, cardiovascular training might benefit long-term hypertrophy, an idea we examined previously. Androgen receptors are another popular one, and this will be the focus of today's video. Androgens, such as testosterone, produce the effects they do through androgen receptors. Androgen receptors are within cells, including muscle fibers, and androgens, such as testosterone, bind to androgen receptors, and events unfolding thereafter produce the physiological effects we associate with androgens, like an increase in myofibular protein synthesis, which is the creation of the proteins that make muscle fibers bigger. It's logical having more androgen receptors allows more of a person's androgens to be directed towards building muscle. In fact, in individuals using special supplements, their traps and delts may grow disproportionately more. Massive traps and delts are often considered a telltale sign they view special supplements. The reason for this might be since the traps and delts tend to have more androgen receptors, enabling the exogenous supplements to more effectively produce hypertrophy in these muscle regions. But what about the role of androgen receptors in natural individuals? One specific study is often utilized to suggest androgen receptors play a crucial role in hypertrophy in natural individuals, and a specific supplement is often recommended to increase androgen receptor density naturally. Let's analyze all the data on androgen receptors and hypertrophy, with the aim of answering. How scientifically supported is the idea that people with more androgen receptors always grow more? If androgen receptors are important for hypertrophy, are there any truly evidence-based ways or supplements to increase them? The most frequently cited paper on androgen receptors is this 2018 one from Canada. 49 trained men were recruited to perform resistance training 4 days a week for 12 weeks. Training increased lean mass as well as slower and fast twitch fiber sizes extracted from the vastus lateralis muscle. Before presenting the androgen receptor data, it's interesting to know the researchers examined the relationship between a range of resting hormone concentrations and muscle hypertrophy by backward elimination regression. Fundamentally, the analysis did not find a relationship between any of the resting hormones and muscle hypertrophy, so that includes total testosterone as well as free testosterone. So those with higher overall levels of total or free testosterone did not necessarily see more hypertrophy than those with lower levels an idea we've explored in more depth in a prior video. With androgen receptors, the researchers divided the subjects into high and low responders and found higher responders tended to have greater androgen receptor content. Pooling the data of the high and low responders, there were linear relationships between androgen receptor content and lean mass, slow twitch fiber, and fast twitch fiber gains. Therefore, this study suggests androgen receptors may be one thing that delineates a hard gainer from an easy gainer. Despite this study being widely utilized in support of androgen receptors for hypertrophy, fewer people are aware of this other 2018 study out of the USA. 67 untrained men trained a range of exercises with these variables. After the study, the researchers categorized subjects either as high responders, moderate responders, or low responders based on how much they grew their vastus lateralis. Total testosterone levels, measured before and after training, were comparable between the low, moderate, and high responders, further supporting the idea those with higher testosterone levels do not always see greater gains. However, androgen receptor content was also similar between the low, moderate, and high responders, suggesting androgen receptors may not be that important for hypertrophy. So what are we to make of this? Hypertrophy is evidently multifactorial and it can be difficult for a study to successfully find what these variables are since there are so many moving parts. My current thoughts are although this second study fails to suggest androgen receptors delineate high from low responders, given there are so many moving parts, 
It alone isn't enough to debunk the whole idea androgen receptors are important for hypertrophy. It's potentially worth pointing out the first study was conducted on trained individuals, while the second study was conducted on untrained individuals. On top of this, less known to most people as well, we do have other studies linking androgen receptors to hypertrophy in slightly different ways. In both the previously mentioned studies, androgen receptor content did not increase with the resistance training. But other studies have found that resistance training naturally can sometimes increase androgen receptor content. Some data associates this androgen receptor content increase with muscle hypertrophy. Specifically, this 2011 study from Finland had untrained younger and older men trained twice a week for 21 weeks. The change in androgen receptor content experienced by the subjects correlated with their muscle fiber size gains as well as lean mass gains. In other words, the subjects that tended to increase their androgen receptor content from resistance training the most tended to experience the best muscle fiber and lean mass gains. Another 2013 Canadian study observed similar things. 23 untrained men trained 4 times per week for 16 weeks. There was a correlation between changes in androgen receptor content and muscle fiber size increases. Thus, these two studies link the ability to increase androgen receptor content with muscle hypertrophy which is a slightly different association between androgen receptor content and hypertrophy the initial study found. Now, it's worth mentioning all the data examined so far are merely associational and based on comparisons between people. So strictly speaking, it isn't sufficient to prove that increasing a single person's androgen receptor content definitively increases their muscle mass. More controlled studies are technically needed to establish such a conclusion. Interestingly though, there are animal studies that demonstrate if you block their androgen receptors, the amount of muscle hypertrophy and strength gains they experience from resistance exercise is diminished. The implication of most of the data assessed throughout this video is that increasing androgen receptor content might benefit muscle hypertrophy. But as I said, more quality data is needed to establish true causation between androgen receptors and hypertrophy. Nonetheless, can you increase androgen receptor content? As we've seen, although some studies fail to find resistance training increases androgen receptor content, we do have documented instances where lifting weights naturally produces an increase in androgen receptor content. It's not clear what precise training variables might optimize androgen receptor content gains. I'm wondering if what increases androgen receptor content differs between people, and if this could be one explanation for individual differences in the optimal training program. As I plan to explore in a book I'm working on, the optimal training variables for evoking muscle hypertrophy can substantially vary between people, and maybe this is because what increases a regulator of hypertrophy for one person, such as androgen receptor content, doesn't do the same thing in another individual. Rather, a different set of training variables optimizes their androgen receptor content. However, this is currently extremely speculative and nowhere near a definitive conclusion. Speaking of individual differences, Tracking your own training over time is highly useful for individualizing your training, and Alpha Progression is an excellent app that helps this process. Your progression can be tracked with graphs, allowing you to analyze long-term correlations between your training variables and progression rates. You can input your program or try out their extremely flexible custom workout generator, where you can specify what equipment you have, your preferred training frequency and session durations, and if you want to focus or even neglect certain muscle groups. The app now contains a database of over 550 exercises with text and video tutorials. The app's algorithm will dissect your past performance to provide progression recommendations during workouts. The link in the comments and description gets you two weeks free of all the app's features, plus 20% off a subscription. The House of Hypertrophy will get 50% if you do purchase the app, and this sincerely helps support these videos. Thank you. Does L-carnitine L-tartrate increase androgen receptor content? It is widely believed it does, a belief stemming from this 2006 study from the USA. 10 trained men were supplied with either L-carnitine L-tartrate or a placebo. After 21 days, resting androgen receptor content was higher in the subjects taking L-carnitine L-tartrate. However, the problem is this is only one study. The fact is one study can never be proof for something and this point is even more relevant in the supplement world. Take the example of D-aspartic acid. In 2009, 
The first human study established that D-aspartic acid increased testosterone by 42%. Subsequently, supplement companies sold D-aspartic acid as a scientifically supported way to increase testosterone. Yet, six studies over the subsequent years failed to find D-aspartic acid increased testosterone. One of them actually found it decreased testosterone, while the other five found no effect. I'm not saying future studies will come out failing to find L-carnitine L-tartrate works, there is no way to know until more data is published. What I am saying though is just because one study supports the effectiveness of a supplement, in no way can this qualify as definitive proof. Upon searching for ways to increase androgen receptor content online, you may come across claims intermittent fasting helps. One article references data that didn't even directly explore androgen receptor content, rather the data was just short-term effects of intermittent fasting on testosterone. To my knowledge, no long-term data explores the effects of intermittent fasting on androgen receptor content. The same article suggests caffeine may increase androgen receptor content, but the reference study was conducted on rats. As far as I know, no human data has explored the long-term association between caffeine and androgen receptor content. Androgen receptors may play a role in muscle hypertrophy in natural individuals. The precise role is somewhat murky though. One study finds an association between resting levels of androgen receptor content and muscle hypertrophy, while two other studies find an association between androgen receptor content increases with training and subsequent muscle hypertrophy. We also have animal studies finding if you block androgen receptors, the amount of hypertrophy and strength they experience from training decreases. There currently isn't any clear way to increase androgen receptor content. One study suggests L-carnitine L-tartrate may do this, but the problem is it's only one study. The example of D-aspartic acid helps us understand why this is potentially problematic. Resistance training itself can produce increases in androgen receptor content, but it's not clear how consistent or individualized this effect is. Claims that intermittent fasting and caffeine increase androgen receptor content lack long-term human data to verify this. So unfortunately, there isn't a practical takeaway from this video. However, knowledge in itself is useful, especially when misinformation pervades the fitness, nutrition and supplement world. I hope this video helps you understand the current science on androgen receptors. I also hope this video encourages you to be a little more skeptical about things. Even though something may be purported to be evidence-based, actually being aware of what the evidence is precisely is needed for knowing the big picture. This is my aim with the House of Hypertrophy to help individuals understand the full picture of the scientific literature on various topics. As always, links to the studies in the video can be found in the description. Finally, I have a free ultimate guide to bench pressing ebook that covers these areas. Feel free to get it in the link in the comments and description.